there's no way to deny it. DC Comics has been absolutely fantastic when it comes to all of their animated projects, and in my personal opinion, their crowning achievement was Batman Beyond. It went strong for a solid three seasons, but believe it or not, it's actually spawned multiple comics. So today, I want to take a look at the history of Batman Beyond himself, Terry McGinnis, from the cartoon, to the comics, and beyond. But before we hop in, I want to make it very clear that we're going to be hopping in and out of different continuities. And if that doesn't really make sense, then I highly recommend that you check out this video right here, where I talk about the DC Animated Universe and the universes that spawned from it. That'll make this a little bit easier to understand if you're feeling lost. Anyway, let's go. In the second season finale of Justice League Unlimited, it was revealed that Amanda Waller of Project Cadmus noted Bruce Wayne's increasing age and realized that the world would always need a Batman. Because of this, she spearheaded Project Batman Beyond. This involved taking Bruce's DNA and finding a couple that matched the psychological profile of Thomas and Martha Wayne. The couple? Warren and Mary McGinnis. When Warren thought he was getting a flu shot, his reproductive DNA was actually being overwritten with nanotechnology, making any children that he fathers sons of Bruce Wayne. This is why his offspring, Terry and Max, have black hair when both of their parents are redheads. They're more or less clones of Bruce. But genetics aren't everything. In order to recreate the events that turned Bruce into Batman, Waller hired the assassin Phantasm to kill Terry's parents just as they were leaving a movie. However, Phantasm couldn't do it. Terry's parents were spared, and Project Batman Beyond was scrapped. Despite his parents not being killed, Terry still grew up with his own hardships. When his parents divorced, McGinnis lashed out as a troublemaker, got into gang violence, and frequented juvenile hall. In fact, the only reason why Terry didn't go to prison for some of his crimes was due to his age. Though on one fateful night, Terry pissed off a local gang, the Jokers, and accidentally stumbled upon Wayne Manor when trying to outrun them. Enter Bruce Wayne, who helped Terry kick their butts, but the commotion was way too much for his decrepit body. McGinnis helped the old man back into his mansion, but when he saw a bat stuck in a grandfather clock, Terry tried to let it out and accidentally discovered the Batcave and Bruce's former life as Batman in the process. This field trip was cut short, however, as Bruce quickly chased McGinnis off his property, but little did they know that Terry's life was going to change dramatically. See, Bruce's company underwent a hostile takeover and now stands as Wayne Powers, which Terry's dad works for. After a corporate whistleblower gives Mr. McGinnis some of the company's sinister secrets, the Wayne Powers Quiet Squad was sent to take him out. Though commanded by the intimidating Mr. Fix, Terry's dad was actually killed by a man named Jake Chill. If that name sounds familiar, it's because yes, the trigger man who killed Terry's dad is directly related to Joe Chill, the man who killed Bruce Wayne's parents. Terry tried to get Bruce to take on the Quiet Squad, but was turned down. However, McGinnis was fueled by revenge, so he stole the Batman Beyond suit and went off on his own. Though he was initially opposed, Bruce monitored and assisted Terry on his mission remotely from the Batcave, and after taking down Mr. Fix, Terry was able to win Bruce over. Under the guise of being Mr. Wayne's assistant, McGinnis was free to fight crime as the all-new Batman. With Bruce's help, of course. And really, that was pretty much the entire cartoon series. It was a Villain of the Week style show with an all-new rogues gallery, sometimes the original Batman animated series, and focused heavily on Terry trying to balance being a superhero, spending time with his family, and his on-and-off relationship with his girlfriend Dana. Of course, there was also Terry's brief fling with a girl named Melanie, who was secretly a part of a villainous family called the Royal Flush Gang, but ended up performing. Thankfully, Terry is able to have some sort of balance in his life, and that's mainly because of his best friend, Max Gibson, the only other person to know the secret of Terry's double life. Outside of helping him make excuses for absences in school, Max is a hacker extraordinaire who assists McGinnis in his escapades. Yet no amount of help would be enough to prepare Terry for one of the biggest trials of his life, the return of the Joker. Though he was seemingly killed off, the Joker had created a piece of advanced technology that allowed him to rewrite the genetic code and memories of Tim Drake, one of Wayne's former Robins. With access to Tim's secrets, Joker took over the Joker's gang, infiltrated the Batcave, and severely injured Bruce. This left Terry more or less on his own against the Joker and his henchmen, but was able to defeat the Clown Prince of Crime, cementing himself as the true successor to the Batman legacy. 
Now, Batman isn't the only hero in this future era. In fact, Superman is still alive and kicking, along with an all-new incarnation of the Justice League. Heck, Supes himself even invited Terry to join the League when he suspected a traitor among the group. Spoiler, it was Superman the whole time. Much like Bruce before him, McGinnis only became a part-time member of the League, coming in when he had the time or in cases of extreme emergencies. Besides, Terry had his own share of problems in Gotham, such as a clone of the first Robin, Dick Grayson, masquerading as the villain Hush, and Bruce almost replacing Terry with a legion of Batman drones. Eventually, though, the Justice League was able to convince Terry to officially join, under a few conditions, of course. Gotham is Batman's main priority. If Batman says he's busy, he's busy. And Gotham is off-limits, unless Batman specifically asks for help. Interestingly, this was only the beginning of Terry's group of friends expanding. He started teaming up with a new hero named Vigilante, who, unbeknownst to McGinnis, was Jake Chill, the aforementioned trigger man who killed Terry's father. Not only that, but Terry's girlfriend Dana finally figured out that her boyfriend was Batman. Like, seriously girl, it's about time. Then we got some more cool stories, but nothing of life-changing note. However, there was this one time in the Justice League Beyond series where Terry temporarily became the Demon Etrigan to fight the legendary serpent Ouroboros. Fast forward a couple of years, and everything changes! Terry started to attend college and discovers that Vigilante killed his father when Jake was under the influence of Fear Toxin. When Bruce said that he had never even heard of Jake Chill until that moment, Terry refused to believe him. There wasn't much time to process everything though because Jake was killed by Joker Toxin shortly thereafter. Despite Terry's anger over Jake killing his father, McGinnis still mourned his death and pulled back from everyone by officially separating from Bruce and by breaking up with Dana. Again. Now, McGinnis works with Dick Grayson who took over Bruce's role, and honestly, they work pretty well together. On top of that, Terry and Melanie got back together, and despite some anger and angst, things are looking pretty good in Terry's life. That is, until Terry ends up in another universe, Earth-50, the home of the dark version of the Justice League, the Justice Lords. Terry was able to find his doppelganger on this Earth, but unfortunately, he's a member of the Joker's gang. Okay, you know what, dealing with two characters with the same name is going to get a bit confusing, so let's call the Terry that we know from Earth-12, Terry-12, and his doppelganger, Terry-50. So that makes things a little less confusing. Alright, let's continue. With the help of Terry-50, a kick-ass alternate universe Batsuit, Terry-12's Justice League, and Dick Grayson's doppelganger, Terry-12 was able to take down this world's leader, the evil Lord Superman. Not only that, but the doppelganger of Terry-12's father was still alive on this Earth. Terry 50 sets it up to where our boy can meet up with his father about once a week via a portal in the Batcave. Plus, while he's on these cross-universe trips, Terry 12 helps train Dick Grayson's doppelganger and Terry 50, who has taken over as Batman. Now, back on Earth 12, Melanie suited up in her royal flush costume one last time to take on her mother, who had returned to a life of crime. But Terry didn't believe that Melanie had really changed her ways, so they broke up. Again. If that wasn't enough, the villain Rewire took Dick Grayson hostage and learned about the portal that took McGinnis to and from Earth-50. Without hesitation, Bruce destroyed the portal. Dick move. After defeating Rewire, Terry took one last look at the portal to see if it was truly beyond repair, and it turns out that Terry-50 and Dick Grayson's doppelganger were able to get a portal of their own going. See, the doppelganger of Terry-12's father was mad that his son was missing on their visits, so he went to his apartment, only to discover Terry 50, blonde hair and all. When his actual son explained, he actually came around and was comfortable with seeing both versions of Terry. Sadly, Terry 12 didn't take him up on this offer, deciding to live his own life in his own universe, but took solace in knowing that Terry 50 could repair his broken relationship with his father. With a hug, Terry 12 bid the residents of Earth 50 adieu, and at the end of the series, he even makes back up with Bruce to give us a happy ending. Now, let's hop out of the Earth-12 continuity to go right on back to the original DC Animated Universe. Remember how I said how that episode of Just League Beyond gave us Terry's true origin? Well, it also serves as an epilogue for the entire Batman Beyond series. One day, Bruce's kidneys failed, and the hospital needed a tissue donor to clone a new one. McGinnis stepped up, only to discover that he was an identical genetic match. Bruce's son. Naturally, Terry did not take this news well. It's also revealed that Terry got back with Dana and had been dating her for 15 years before breaking up with her. 
again, to keep her safe. Oh, and also he quits the Justice League for good measure, because why not? Now, in Terry's mind, there was only one person who had the answers to the mystery of Wayne being his father, Amanda Waller. She went through the aforementioned story of Project Batman Beyond, and this actually gave Terry some peace of mind. With that, he went back to working with Bruce, and he even has plans to finally propose to Dana. Now, I'd like to point out that there hasn't been a Batman Beyond from the DCAU or any of the Earth-12 since 2014, and you can learn more about why in my video guide to the DC Animated Universe that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, this guy right here from Future's End, The New 52, and Rebirth, completely different Terry than we were talking about in this video, and it's just gonna get really confusing if I try to dive into that. So I'm gonna save that for a different video if you guys want. Let me know in the comments down below, but today I wanted to focus on just the Terry from Earth-12 and from the cartoon series. If you're looking for a place of where to start Batman Beyond, then I'd recommend watching all three seasons of the animated series, read the Batman Beyond Digital Comics series, and of course, Batman Beyond 2.0. Now, I know I mentioned it in this video, but if you're still confused about how the DC Animated Universe became the Earth-12s, then I highly recommend watching this video guide I did for the entire DCAU. It's a really solid video that I worked pretty hard on, and I think you might enjoy it. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed that video. And as always, I hope you just have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching.